familiar tune. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rick O'Hara on behalf of John Carroll School. It's a great pleasure to welcome all of you and to thank you for being here this afternoon for what we think is going to be a very, very enjoyable event. We're very grateful to all of you. Um, I'm curious, first of all, do we have any domers, either current or alumni domers in the house? Very good. Welcome. Welcome. Do we have any donors who are um, also alumni of John Carroll School? Okay. Any uh, any donors who might have met at John Carroll and they're here as a couple? Would you stand? <laughs> would you stand? Any, any domers who might have met as a couple at John Carroll? I mean, at, at Notre Dame, at the university, so. Okay, well there's one couple out there. What's your name? What's your name? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna end this, uh, this facade. This is my daughter and her husband. <laughs> Caitlin and Gintis, they met at the University of Notre Dame. They graduated in 2008. We used to call Katie Rudy because um, she didn't bear that much resemblance, but she uh, uh, was on the waiting list for what seemed like forever. Notre Dame was her dream school. She was on the waiting list, she was on the waiting list, she was on the waiting list, and then one evening we got a call from the University, or from South Bend, Indiana, it said on, on the phone, and uh, she was accepted. Then came the bad news. She said, I want to be in a five-year program at the University of Notre Dame in architecture. We didn't get a scholarship either, did we? No. Five-year program at the University of Notre Dame. That was the bad news. The great news was it was worth every penny. She also met our wonderful son-in-law who's with her, and, uh, and the rest is history. Uh, then, then more good news was the day, some years after that, when she said, Dad, I've decided I'm going to pay off all of my university loans yeah. now that I have a job. <laughs> that was a great day. Only to be uh, paid back when she said, Dad, I'm getting married to Gintis and uh, I want 250 people at the wedding. <laughs> so. Uh, life has a way of evening things out, but anyway, enough about that. We're glad you're here too, guys. Thanks for coming up. Uh, John Carroll has a very proud tie-in to the University of Notre Dame. 
which is that um, our first football coach here, the late Jerry Gray, was a Notre Dame graduate. He was an outstanding athlete at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. He came here and had a, an iconic career as a teacher and as our first football coach. His name will forever be on our football stadium, it's Jerry Gray Stadium. And it's because of him that we proudly wear the, uh, the gold football helmets. And uh, the reason that this wonderful band plays the fight song whenever we score a touchdown or whenever we, we kick off the game. Uh, thank you to the band for giving up Friday, uh, su uh, Sunday afternoon and, uh, and being here, and to their director, Mr. Mark Bolden. Give it up for our band. Thank you, guys. It's also, uh, obviously, it's a, it's a great pri a privilege to have Rudy with us today, um, all of which made possible by wonderful sponsors whom we're going to mention in a minute. I want to thank them. Um, I also want to uh, uh, give a shout out to a new partnership with um, our new Director of Parks and Recreation in Hartford County, Mr. Jimmy Malone. Um, Jimmy called me some months ago and said, uh, we have a chance to bring Rudy Rudiger to Hartford County. We think John Carroll would be an appropriate venue. And, um, and uh, he said, I also heard you're kind of a Notre Dame fan yourself. And I said, yeah, let's try to make this happen. But it couldn't happen without our great sponsors and without the Parks and, and Rec Department of Harper <coughs> County. So thanks to all of them. And uh, thanks again to you all. And I'm going to welcome now to the stage Mr. Jimmy Malone.
Notre Dame sponsor, Mr. William H. Cox, Jr., Real Estate Incorporated. Harford Mutual Insurance. Nice round of applause for this. And our underdog sponsors, all three, and if you could hold your applause to the end, Mr. Harry E. Hopkins III, the School of the Incarnation, and Webster Financial Services. How about a nice round of applause? I'd also like to introduce Councilman Mike Perrone, who is here with us today, who also graduated from the University of Virginia. And also, real quick, because I've gotten to meet a lot of people here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have people from all over the state here today. It's unbelievable how far some people have come from Frederick County, Anne Arundel County, what have you. So uh, we also have our Hartford County Executive, Barry Glassman, is here, who I'd like to have come up. Would you like to come up and welcome everybody to Hartford County? Good afternoon. It's good to see everyone. And it's a pleasure for me to welcome those that are visiting to Hartford County, but also thank our citizens for coming out this afternoon. Thank you for supporting the John Carroll School, one of our premier high schools here in Harper County, as we lift up not only our public schools, but our private independent schools also. And thank you for making Jimmy Malone's day today, all right? I served with him 16 years in the legislature, so I know that he lives the Irish and Notre Dame every day. He almost stopped the legislature each year uh, when there was a playoff game or anything to do with the Fighting Irish. So thank you for making his day. Thank you for your contributions, and uh, thank you again for coming and making this a success. And Rudy, wherever you are, welcome to Harper County. We look forward to hearing your inspirational story. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get down to what it's all about. I can tell you this is the third time I've had the honor and privilege of being with Rudy. And what makes me feel like a million bucks is to look around this room and look at all the young kids that are here. Because I can tell you, Rudy Rudiger was a gentleman and a young man that his whole life he was told why he couldn't do this, why he couldn't do that. And when people said, I want to go to the University of Notre Dame and I want to play football, they all laughed at him and told him, there's no way in the world you'd ever be able to play at the University of Notre Dame. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know this, but yesterday was the 40th anniversary of Rudy making the tackle against Georgia Tech. And if you remember, and what I was all psyched up about yesterday, all week long, everybody predicted Georgia Tech was going to kick Notre Dame's, we're at a Catholic school, you know what. And that's all we heard all week. Notre Dame can't win, they can't win, they can't win. And who won yesterday? The Irish. So they won. They even put it on about the tackle that he made. And I want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to have Rudy here with us today. Notre Dame is known for their golden domes. John Carroll is known for their golden helmets, as is Notre Dame. Well, I'm here to tell you, Rudy has a hard goal. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and welcome the gentleman that everybody told he could never play football at the University of Notre Dame, our friend, Rudy Rudiger.
change your thoughts. Oh, I change your world. Norman Vincent Peale. Unless a man undertakes more than he possibly can do, he will never do all that he can. Henry Drummond. After high school, I'm going to go football over again. Chasing a stupid dream causes nothing but you and everyone around you heartache. The problem with dreamers is they usually are not too much fully aware of the sacrifices you're going to have to make. The most beautiful campus in the world. Having dreams is what makes life tolerable. The thing is for rich kids, smart kids, great athletes. It's not for us.
in that house. Eight of us at the time, just eight kids. And there's 14 that we expanded, and uh, well, my mother and father did. And uh, they went on, and my mother's a wonderful, what an angel she was. I don't know how she did it, but when things got bad, she would sing. She would sing to ease the pain of the stress and everything going on in the house. She would hunt, she was very positive. Never negative, always positive. And, and she would just make you feel like things are gonna be okay. We thought we had everything, which we didn't have much, but we thought we had everything. And my father, who was a war hero in World War II, he flew 22 missions in a B-17 bomber. She would sing this song to him when things got real hard on Danny Boyd. Are you guys anybody from Ireland here? <laughs> And I met a couple guys with Danny Boy, huh? What a great song. And that, that's kind of me looking at one of the brothers. <laughs> Cute, all right? <laughs> there I am, right there. <laughs> What's interesting, I became an angel. What a halo. First communion, man. You're like, oh, but I wasn't. And uh, it's a big day making your first communion when you're a little Catholic boy. Then we grew up, that's where we played baseball, little league baseball. I was a big Yankees fan. Man, I want to, I love baseball, I love my uniform. Man, when my mother followed all that uniform, I was proud of all the uniform. Remember when you folded, you couldn't wait to get your uniform on, your new hat, your uniform, and your glove? We didn't have much of a glove, we always fought over our gloves. Well, my brothers, but I got one. And what's interesting, uh, see that big league ballpark? It was a dream playing there someday. And our coach took us there. But I remember he says, you might have a shot to get a foul ball. Because when I tried out for a little, I remember going for a ball. They hit it up in the air, and I went for it. I missed my glove, hit me right in the head. And, and then he says, you're all going to get a chance to get a foul ball. But this is when all the things started happening. In 1959, when I went to that part, that foul ball came at me. And it went right over my glove and went right in the coach's glove. We went back to that ballpark, and they lined us all up, said, y'all are going to get a chance to get this ball, and I got excited again, and I got that ball, because I focused, and I ran. It wasn't the fastest, but I focused and went where the ball was. Now, there's a lesson there, if you hear what I'm about to tell you, there's many more kids faster than me, but I got that ball. But in school, that's why I was having issues in school, and I don't know why. I, I didn't like school, but I, I love fourth grade. <laughs> my teacher was always positive like my coaches were. She said, you can be anybody you want to be. And I, man, I was everybody, anybody, anything that inspired me I wanted to be. Fifth grade was tough. And that's why the White House are going to come in here. Because the fifth grade teacher is interesting. She was awesome, but she made a study all the time. I don't like homework. I don't think we should give our kids homework. That's my point. You're at school. Do your work at school. Go home. Have fun. Be with the family. Go to bed. Get up early. Eat nutritious. Go back to school. Work hard at school. Get to the football, basketball. Don't do homework. <laughs> Rudy, don't say that, man. Well, that's my philosophy. It won't stick, but that's what it is. I, the point is, I didn't do any homework. So I got in trouble for it. And uh, I was supposed to go home and study those first five presidents, which I didn't. That's why I got in trouble. But every Thursday, I was uh, playing home run derby. And uh, maybe that's when the dream was really awesome. When I was Mickey Mantle, I get home run and beat Roger Maris. Then it faded when I got back to school when she asked me about my homework. And I didn't know it. She made me sit in the back of the room. Now, saying that, I quit dreaming. I start focusing on the negative instead of the positive. It's called behavior. So I hung around some goofy guys, maybe a friend who I helped one day who I thought was needed help and I helped him. But you know, sometimes uh, you just, uh, need, some people do need help. And, 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 and those guys who you help sometimes are, are, you have to learn, you gotta teach them to help themselves. And, but this guy, thought, he thought I was his buddy because I stopped a couple guys from bullying him. And this was uh, after grade school, I'd get into high school, and I ended up the same way. And uh, back in the classroom, but I was working to be just buddies and relationships. And, 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 and this guy, I said, don't pick on my buddy. 
stop that, I told those guys. And that guy, uh, he befriended me. And he asked me one day if I would go down that river you saw. Remember that river? And, and those guys that I stopped voting him, they wanted to go have a fight. And uh, I said, I can't do that. No way. He said, no, man, come on, man. We got to go down and get those guys, man. They want to fight us. I went, I went home, man. I'll never forget sitting at home saying, should I help Big Nick or not? Should I go? Should I go? And I said, man, I need to go. And, and uh, he said, no, I can't go. And finally, said, I better go. And I'm walking outside. And who catches me? But my father. And that's when he says, where are you going, boy? I says, uh, <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> so you get back in that house where you go. Well, I have two other friends that go back to high school. You know, in the 60s were kind of interesting. Uh, president Kennedy was elected a Catholic president. My dad's all outside. In Notre Dame, he went and said, well, he's had good, good Sundays at church. And a lot of things were happening and a lot of weird things, too. So I go back to school that Monday, and my two buddies... Uh, say to me because I'm daydreaming in the classroom. That's where I got in trouble. Always daydreaming. And, and uh, I was dreaming about what I wanted to be, not what I had to be there. <laughs> and uh, the teacher finally picked on me. Not in a bad way, in a good way, because you're supposed to be paying attention. Never got good grades. <laughs> That's the point. Always. Fail. Could God give me a dream? A dream about going to Notre Dame, about becoming somebody, and I'm a dummy. <laughs> I'm a nobody. It confused me. But because of my buddy who I helped, who I didn't go follow him that time he wanted me to help him. Because my dad saved my life. Because when I went to school the next day, on that Monday, that's what my other two friends said. Did you hear it? I said, what? You're really kind of sad. He said, Big Nick. Did you hear it? I said, what? He's dead. I said, what do you mean? They found him by the river. I said, whoa. He got hit over a rock. You know, over the head with a rock. You know, I could have been there. So think about how important mom and dad are. They know where the boogeyman is. <laughs> so when they say no, they'll tell you why. But my dad at that time didn't tell me why. It was because I said so. That was the answer. I listened to it because I said so. It saved my life that, as well. But I was confused still in school. One of my friends are dead now. Kind of a friend who, who thought I was his friend because I tried to help him. But we're two other friends there. You know, they go on to college. They get good grades. And what am I going to do? I don't know what to do because I'm struggling. Because I'm struggling on what I can't do of what I can do. And uh, it became a real behavior problem. But, you know, you go through that, I guess, when, when there's a demand on academics. And I wasn't an academic kid. I, I just was a dreamer. I dreamt, I, listen, I dreamt about playing in Yankee State, literally, hit home runs in Yankee State, scoring touchdowns for Notre Dame, hit home runs in Yankee State. That was Rudy. I would go home and tell him, but I hit a home run. Oh, Rudy, you're a imagine, you're out your imagination. That's fantasy. Well, all these other guys are, you know, they, I don't know if they know what they're doing or they didn't have a dream. They, they, have, they just thought they had to do this to be that. But I had a dream, but I couldn't be that because they said I couldn't be that because I'm not smart enough because I'm a dummy. I graduated from high school and. And probably that's why I wasn't a candidate for Notre Dame, because I was third in my class in high school from the bottom. So <laughs> that's probably why, you know? So in 1966, that's graduation time. But also something else happened. You got to go to the power plant. <laughs> go to work. My other buddy go off to college. I go to work. I didn't dream about that. <laughs> but when I was stepped in that power plant, you hear the steam, you smell the, all the machinery, and you go, I don't want to be here. It's not what I wanted. 
but I don't know what to do. What do you do? I'm stuck. It's crazy dreaming. I'm a dummy, and I hung around. I, in fact, I hung around a guy at work that was in the Navy. <laughs> it was us. He would tell these Navy stories, and I would sit there and listen. We call him Drunken George, because he always tells Navy stories over a beer, and I would go and listen to him. And it was another guy, Big Bill, Big Bill. He, he was in the Navy, too. He was my boss. Good God. Boy, they would tell Navy stories. I said, well, that was during the Vietnam era. Everyone's getting drafted. And uh, not sure what to do yet. Uh, my buddy's getting drafted. I'm working. What do I do? My buddy's calling me. So we're coming home from college because you're exempted if you go to college. And he's coming home. We're going to go to, they want to go to Friday Night Lights. And we call it Friday Night Lights. You're old high school. You go back to high school. And you say, hey, you know, you're a wannabe uh, a has -been. You know, whatever, and you're going back, and, and you say, and you're acting like a big tough graduate, but you're still saying, I didn't do anything. It's not where I wanted to be. And my one friend, George, and Ralph is his name. Ralph was a free spirited guy. So it was the problem here. See, in 1969 was the problem. He uh, gets in a car crash, is what he did. And, uh, he gets killed on the way to my house because we're going to that Friday night's game. And that's the moment that I realized life is too short. Your life can end just like that, just like Big Nick. So we did the movie, we did composites of these friends to make the message work. But that's when I made a decision. This is what's interesting. Look, remember those Navy stories? It clicked. The light went off, the bell went off. Guess where I ended up? Yes, you're right. I became a shipmate. I was so excited, and here's why. When I ended up in the Navy, it's like hearing the Notre Dame fight song, you know? I'm in the Navy. There's my ship. That was a presidential command ship. That's where the president would go if he went to war. I was on that ship. You know why? Because I was a leader. You know why I was a leader? Because when I went to boot camp, I could fold underwear, shine shoes, and make a rap. That's what I had to do when I brought home my bad grades. <laughs> and I was good at it. I had a lot of bad grades, but man, I knew how to make a bed. And when that drill instructor saw me making a bed, <laughs> doing my shoes, he made me a leader of all those guys. I started getting self-esteem. No matter what, so I started believing in Rudy again. When I started believing in Rudy, I started dreaming. I believed and I dreamed. I didn't have no more goofy thoughts. Isn't that amazing? No one told me I was a dummy. I didn't care whether I was third in my class from the bottom. But man, I'm a leader. Everyone, Rudy, come on, man, show us how to do this. And then I, on the ship, I became a leader. I was just, I was, I loved it. Now, during that time, too, John F. Kennedy made a speech in the 60s when he was president. We're going to go to the moon, right? Remember that speech? It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. 1969, in the middle of the Mediterranean, on the poop deck, they call it, and the big, the captain comes over the loudspeaker. He says, history has been made, guys. Hey, you shipmates, look up towards the moon. We just landed on the moon. I'm looking up this, and my God, I remember that speech. That was in the 60s when President Kennedy was assassinated in the 60s. And just the Vietnam War was starting to wind down a little bit. President Nixon comes in and starts to wind it down. And all of a sudden, things start changing for me, thinking-wise. Seeing the world. I got Navy stories now. So I can go back to work when I get out of the Navy because I'm a union guy, get my job back. Now I can compare Navy stories with my buddy. <laughs> so uh, that's what I did. I went back home and, and told Navy stories. And there was one guy at work. He's a real old guy, so with wisdom. He always asked me why I was staying here. Why are you here, man? Because all I would talk about playing for Notre Dame, that's what I was dreaming about when I was in the Navy. He 
said, you shouldn't be here. You should go, go, to, go to Notre Dame. I said, we don't, I don't have the money, and I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough. He said, yes, you are. It's all mindset. You listen to people. I said, sir, I, I don't know anything in school. <laughs> he said, you don't need to know much. Just need to know what you need to know. <laughs> and do what you need to do, and you'll be fine. That didn't make sense to me. You mean I don't need to know all that other stuff? He said, I needed to know. He says, yeah. What do you think you need to know in order to be, to go to another answer? I said, I have no idea. And watch this. God has a funny way of giving you the answer when you get your mind away from goofy thinking, right? The goofy thoughts stop you from being the person you want to be. Because you're already going back to that button, that rewind button. Wow. Well, Sister Mary says I was stupid. That's why I ended up, why I ended up back in the power plant when I got out of the Navy. That's why I went back to it. That's why I shared my stories. I thought, there's no way. It's crazy. But because I'm sharing the stories and I'm getting this wisdom from my buddy at work, he was like Ralph. He, uh, Ralph took a lot of risks, and so did he, even though he was a good guy. He would see shortcuts and get away with them. You know those shortcuts you think you get away with? Guess what? You don't. You think you are, but you're not. Sooner or later, they're going to catch up. One day, there was a, I don't know what it was, but I go to work. It was a night shift. It was a problem. And, and the problem came from he and I had to kind of work together. I was in charge of all the, believe this or not, the machinery in that power plant. Rudy, but I'm a dummy, but I'm still in charge. And he's in charge of all the electrical stuff. I mean, I had to check all the equipment, make sure everything was running right. So I can't be a dummy to do that, right? I can't be a dummy because I was a leader in the Navy because I could fall underwear and shine shoes. And, and they made me feel important and good and powerful. And so did Cisco. But when I told the Navy stories, Drunken George and Big Bill, they'd laugh and we laughed. And, and Cisco would say, dude, you got to get out of here. But sometimes you don't move because of that goofy thought. Sometimes in life, tragedy gets in, And you realize life is short. And that's when it happened. He took that shortcut. My buddy ended his life. I said, wow. How many times do I have to learn my lesson? How many lessons do I have to learn in order for me to go for my dream? It's the only thing that's stopping you is your thoughts. Not the people. You. No one's stopping you from working hard. And even if your dad got blessed, him, he lost his dream because his father lost his dream. So he's being protective of being a, trying to be a nice guy. His son, dreams call heartache and pain. And they do. They really do, because there's a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of people who don't believe in you that you think should believe in you, and you want them to believe in you, but those are the people you don't want around you anyhow. But it, God has a process of eliminating those people. When you make this dream, you hear that voice? all you need to hear. That voice is always inside you. So in 1972, when my friend and I went towards my dream, I have no idea how I was going to get, I quit my job and went towards my dream. That's what the voice told me. And bam, there it was. Holy cross, you can tell. I mean, there it is. A little school right across from Notre Dame. A hundred kids in that school. If you look across the street, you see the dome. And I said, oh my God, there it is. By going towards your dream, your answers reveal right in front of you. There is a bridge, and the bridge is the junior college. They said in high school, dummies go to junior college. Kids with uh, learning, that's going over, going to junior college. I shut that <coughs> sound effect off a long time ago. And now I'm going, I'm walking into the little brother, and I forget him, he sit behind his desk, and knock on his door, 
I said, brother, Rudy Rudiger. I want to go to Notre Dame. I was in the Navy. He said, come on in. He was excited to see me to try another student team. He said, come on in. Sit down. He said, what do you want to do now? I'll give him my goal. I want to go to Notre Dame. I want to play football. He says, great. Never put it down. I said, what do I have to do to go here? You're already here. You're in. I mean, I don't have to do an entrance test? No. No SATs, ACT? Forget those. <laughs> you don't need them if you come here. I got so excited. That's what's stopping me, an SAT and an ACT. I mean, what about my class rank, brother? Forget that. It's in the past. He says, what we do now is important. What we do now is important. He says, all you have to do when you come here, you really, if you really want to go, you need A's. Brother, I never had any in my life. He said, you already got one. Committed. I didn't quite understand that. He said, if you come, you come to school every day, go to class, you never miss a class, ask questions, and we're going to give you quizzes and tests, they call them, but they're not in this classroom. They're, if you don't know something, ask your friend. <laughs> I want you to know something before you leave here. Man, in high school, that was called cheating. <laughs> but now I can ask a friend if I don't know. I said, heck yeah. So in 1974, where do I end up? At Notre Dame. Because I listened and did it. And because of that, there was another obstacle. They were letting girls in at the same time. And every time I went for the letter, they would say, no, 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 because the slots were coming. I love girls, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but why are they taking my slot? So I built a lot of relationships at Notre Dame. Every time I got my rejection letter, I stood in front of that dean store and asked why I couldn't get in, and they liked me. I think the only way I got there is because of the relationships. And they remembered me because that dean didn't want to see me anymore. And that's a fact. I stood by his door every day. He finally said to me, son, I don't want to see you no more. He said, the day you don't see me is the day I get in. <laughs> and I got in. And not because I was the smartest kid, but I got to Notre Dame. Now, if you're at Notre Dame in this spot, if you look 10 degrees, there's a Notre Dame power plant. If you look straight ahead, you see the Golden Dome. I came from that power plant. If you just looked a little bit this way, the Notre Dame power plant's at way well, don't show it here, because it's more cinematic if you show that. <laughs> so we had Sean, and now we're at Notre Dame. I am a Notre Dame student. I live the dream. I'm walking campus and, well, I'll never forget when I told my father I went. Now you think about this when you get in. What do you tell your dad? Hey, I'm in. You want him to celebrate because he really wanted you to go, but he was afraid for the failure of you. This is a big moment. And at work, he would get a lot of uh, ridicule. When did your kid get to play football? That's what he talked about. And I'll never forget when he read that letter. He said, hey, you did it, man. Yeah, I did it. You know, never once did I have to ask him for a nickel to go to Notre Dame. You know why? The Navy GI Bill. I solved that problem by going to the Navy. Isn't that awesome? So the Navy paid for this. Then I also had to work in the stadium. All these things, but... This is my dream was football. I had to go through all those rejections. I finally get in. Isn't that awesome? That's the movie. We shot that at 5 a.m. in the morning. This is Sean Astin actually taking all the hits in the movie. That's pretty cool. We shot all this before the, we actually shot the movie. So we took a little risk with them. But we had to because the leaves were falling. And we had to shoot it all in 1992 to shoot this stuff. Otherwise, you couldn't get the feel of the campus and the actual practice field. That Notre Dame practice fields don't look like that now. I mean, it's like the four seasons. <laughs> I don't know how they could lose. I don't get it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's amazing. When it was cold, you, you didn't have an inside deal. But you were at Notre Dame. You know, I would walk campus and I would see kids walking across the grass. I'd say, dude, what are you doing? He looked at me and said, why are you walking on the grass? You got a sidewalk. This is Notre Dame. He said, dude, what kind of grass you want? <laughs> this isn't, you know, how they thought. I said, hey, man, this is Notre Dame. Appreciate it. 
And I guess they would walk around. There's that crazy kid, man. You better walk on that sidewalk. <laughs> He's going to remind you to walk in on, on the sidewalk. That's how the students got to know me. And I wasn't even, I didn't know how to express myself to the students, but just be part of them. They were a lot smarter than me. So I had a lot of relationships that helped me get to Notre Dame, to the girls were the best answer I had. You know, I had so many girlfriends at Notre Dame. It's true, because I was no threat. All I wanted was help me get through school, man. <laughs> and there you were. All my buddies saw all the girls know me. And I know all those girls. He said, the only thing I want is help them to help me. Oh, man. See, they were much smarter than me. They didn't need the help, I guess. But I did. So it was fun building those relationships and, and building relationships with the kids that, that were on the football team. Actually, a lot of football players knew me before I got to Notre Dame, before I went out. And maybe that's why they accepted me, too, because of the relationships. Things are funny when you build relationships, isn't it? How people want you to win when you think the world's against you and it isn't. See, 1975 was an important year because <laughs> it was my senior year. <laughs> and all I wanted to do was play in one game, walk through the tunnel, and just... See, you're not really a football player on that depth chart or on that Notre Dame tradition if you never walk in that field during the game. Just one second. I would bet the coach is, coach, can I just dress at halftime? Let me walk through the tunnel and, and let me play for one second and you never have to see me again. <laughs> That's all the time I would beg him. And some of the players picked up on that. But the NCAA came up with a real strange rule that year because Eric Persegan, my first year at Notre Dame was what Eric Persegan, because he remembered me because I walked in his office, asked him, telling him I'm going to play football for him someday. And when I walked out, he said, you the kid that walked in my office? I said, yeah. He said, you made it, huh? I said, yes, sir. And that's all he had to say to me. <laughs> it's awesome when the head coach recognizes you. <laughs> You're not even a scholarship player. Then they, he leaves and a new coach comes in, everything changes. New NCAA rule, only 60 kids could dress at home. And Eric Parsegan said 110 kids will dress at home. He made that commitment. If you come to practice every day, you will dress. Dan Devine could not hold up to that commitment because of that rule. That's why in the movie, you see the kids coming in and putting their jerseys on the table. Now, if you're a Notre Dame football player, that would never happen. <laughs> That's a movie deal. But because of the uh, way we had to do the movie, do the relationships it's like the janitor. He had five characters in or not. That, you know, yes, I worked with him all the time. If it wasn't for him, I, I, I couldn't earn my room. Uh, and Barry cleaned that stadium after every game, got it ready. But that was just a relationship, and I loved his passion. I loved his job, and, and, and I saw that in him. And he was always one of my uh, guys. Says, hey, where are you going to play someday? And, and, uh, and he believed that. Uh, and so there's some other guys in there too. Some guys who quit the team because it was tough. And that's why they would come up to me afterwards, after it's all done. Boy, I regret the fact that I quit. So the point of all of this is don't live in regret. And that's why we developed this character in the janitor. You can't live in regret. Just go for it. And keep trying and never quit. And Keep working hard, act like you should play, even though you're not. Keep doing it like you should. And when the moment comes, you'll be surprised. You gotta be ready. If I didn't go to practice every day and my buddies didn't go into the coaches and say, let Rudy dress for me, and that one guy gave up his uniform, I don't think I would be here today. Because they would ne never made that movie if it wasn't a Notre Dame story. Notre Dame is a huge, huge, I call it, um, it's a huge name across the globe. And a great, uh, great feel. People, I guess it represents hope. Talk about this in the show. It, and it is, to listen to one of my ex teammates, he'll tell you. There was a guy by the uh, who played for us, his name was Pat Sar. And it's kind of an interesting story because Pat did go into uh, see Coach Devine. But this was senior day, and it was a great day for everybody. And so what Pat went in and saw Coach Devine and said, hey, I'm not going to play. I know you're on the community, you know, on the sidelines. Could you have Rudy dress in my spot? And, of course, he agreed to do it. And actually, a nice little story.
story about that, I think 20 some years later, his young son walked out of the door where well, he's number 45 and played on the special team for four years here. So it was a really unique story that carried on forward. All American, all pro, one more that 1975 Notre Dame team. They were all running the game and uh, everybody started getting into it because they really wanted to see the guy do well. Rudy was uh, one of the about 20 walkers on that team. And, uh, you know, I, I really had good experience with him because he was a defensive end on the scout team. He was a pullback and, and pullbacks that had to block defensive ends. And he would just jump up after we were not in the house and say, come on, play hard. And he really did that. He really, really was uh, a perfect example of Notre Dame spirit. That's kind of neat, huh? Ex-teammates that I'm watching the game yesterday. Coach Laverty, I come up. Laverty, they got your play on national TV. They're 40 years ago. Look at the hair. <laughs> right? We're in good shape. But I'll never forget standing on the sideline saying, I got to play. I did all this work on if I don't get on the field, no one will ever know I played for you know for the except my teammates. I want my children to know. That's when I have my children. I want to say daddy played for you know what I mean? Well, if you don't give up, if you're in preparation, you'd be surprised at all the relationships you build on that campus, they start chanting your name. And they get you into the game, not the coaches of your classmates. They chanted Rudy, not the football team. So we kind of flip-flopped it in the movie. 27 seconds, came down to five seconds. This is during the Boston College game. We filmed it. Sean gets the tackle. Kind of neat, huh? Right. They picked him up, carried him off the field, but watch where they pick him up at. Watch this. Right in the arms of touchdown beat. Is that awesome? We didn't make that up, guys. That just happened. That's your faith. That's the actual tackle. A lot of people say, you didn't get that tackle, Rudy. Well, there it is. <laughs> Sorry, non-believer. <laughs> you know, I did it, you didn't. Then they carry you off. So you didn't get carried off? Doesn't matter. You made my movie. <laughs> so, oh, you're going to have that. And it isn't even about that. It isn't even about that. It's about that journey we go on. But because of one journey ends, that doesn't mean there's no other journeys. That's what's awesome about this next little journey. I'm sitting in the locker room at Notre Dame, taking my jersey off. It happened so quick, huh? Done. It's over. I'm sitting on my bench. If this was a little lower, I would sit on it for you. Take him in. This guy comes up to me, a sports writer. You know how they are. Hey, man. They're cheering for you. They don't even know you. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I didn't say that to him. But he's kind of like, I've never seen this at Notre Dame. I've been here 30 years. Never saw these people cheer for a guy they don't even know. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? I'm getting too. You just don't get it. It's not about that tackle. It's about the journey I got to get here. But I didn't say that to him either. But here's what he did. He said, this only happens in Hollywood. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> this only happens. He gave me another dream. So dreams come from people. And you think they're negative, but they're positive. Especially if you're a positive thinker, you embrace that statement he made and not make it a negative, but take it into a positive statement. How am I going to do that? You don't ask how. Because if you thought about how, you wouldn't do it. Because it's too hard. Just like Notre Dame. How am I going to get to Notre Dame? When I did not think about how anymore, and you just do it, you go towards your dream, the answers unfold in front of you, obstacles come, adversity comes, and you overcome them because you're not thinking about how. <laughs> it's a how. Hollywood. I went to Hollywood. <laughs> I was so excited about Hollywood. 
I attracted people to me because I was excited. Most people are down in Hollywood because they're all getting turned down and rejected. I'm happy and excited meeting everybody, and I created a stir in Hollywood. You know, uh, they all talked about me. Didn't know they were talking about. Watch out for that guy. He's got a story about 27 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he played football at Notre Dame. I called. Even called Stallone. I, you know, and got a nice letter back from not my cup of tea. <laughs> but everything comes back. You see, Notre Dame did not want this movie either. They said, no, no, no. And thank God they did. <laughs> the harder they were, the better the movie got. The tougher they are. Remember that one. You're being, see, the lessons are learned through people making you earn it. You're not entitled to anything. <laughs> you got to earn it. And that's how they were saying, what right do you think you have to come into our university? And there's many kids on this campus that have done what you did, and they're not going to make a movie. See, yeah, I know. <laughs> You're not Newt Rockney. You're not George Gibb. Yeah, I know. I stopped telling the story to those people. Quick. Thank God I did. Because the people you think that want you to succeed really don't because they're jealous and envious. And they're not open to, what? Other successes. Because they're happy, they're comfortable. You have to learn not to be around those people, but they're there regardless. And you know what I'm talking about. He's hiring around people that believe in you. It was a hotel manager, I love him. He always wanted to tell me your story. Tell me your story, buddy. He would get passionate and excited. And one day I come back, my head's down. He said, what's wrong, Rudy? I said, Notre Dame just said no to us for the He said, no. He said, don't worry about it. He said, my buddy's coming to town. We have pizza with him. I said, really? Yeah, OK. So I want to have pizza with him. And you know, he says, tell me your story. Come on, tell me your story. And I'm eating my pizza. I'm telling my story. I don't even think I ate it because I told it. We're both passionate. He's getting all fired up. He said, I love it. I said, oh, great. Now, what do you do from there? But I didn't say that because we're, he said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you to California. You're going to talk to my buddy. And he's going to write this story. He said, oh, wow. What has he done? I didn't ask what he did. He said he wrote the movie Hoosiers. Good thing I wrote Hoosiers. I read Hoosiers and saw Hoosiers. Good thing he did it. I went out there to meet him. And there's a reason why he sold insurance uh, during this journey. He talked about rejections and no-shows. <laughs> So I go, I go to 1992, that's when we shot the movie, because all these no shows, I sat, listen to this, I sat in Hollywood for four hours waiting for these guys, and, and I'm telling about shot asking of Goonies and all that, and uh, but this guy, he couldn't tell because they stood me up. I went outside and saw a mailman with a smile and happy, and I thanked him for it, and he led me right to Angelo Pizzo, that's why they shoot this movie now. A mailman! A mailman! Got the movie done. And a hotel manager. There's Charles Dutton, who lived in Ellicott City, who comes up to me. And he said, oh, I'm going to do this movie, Rudy, because I was in prison for 10 years. And I love talking about people. That's not your color, your race, it's your attitude. He loved that line, so he took that. See, I never played football. We taught him at Notre Dame. Think about the courage that took and the people we had. He did go through that pain. He really, really did. Actor, I had tremendous respect for actors. There's Father Really, our actual chaplain. We put him in the movie. Isn't that cool? Put all your buddies in the movie. That's, and there's Vince Vaughn, <laughs> Mr. In Terror. You know, he was a sabotager of the team. Well, and there's John Favreau, who directed Iron Man. Now he's just finishing uh, uh, an animation called Jungle Book coming out in April. That I made the movie, I'm an actor. Isn't that cool? If you want to be an actor make a movie, you can do whatever you want. There's Ned Beatty. I love Ned Beatty. There's Lee Mazin. All these kids we recruited to play Notre Dame football for the movie. There's our first uh, premier in Joliet, Illinois. We have four of them. This is cool. We raised the mind and built a habitat home. Oh, there's that phone again. No, I, I kind of put her off for a while. She said, she, but I had to tell you the story before I could tell her. I can go to the White House. <laughs> so I told that whole story just so I can go to the White House. 
because I had to call my father, but I called my mother to tell my father. <laughs> she was the boss of the family and inspiration, so she told me that because I never saw him argue. She said we made a commitment that would argue in front of the kids. We argued upstairs. That's why there's 14 of you know, that type of thing. <laughs>
that's your actual carry off, isn't that neat? So if you don't buy one, that's okay, but if I sign it, it means you can uh, get 200 bucks for it. Thank you. <laughs> so you make a difference with kids. You all agree? These are the guys, right here. And, uh, you know, Sean, you know, it's funny because he played in Lord of the Rings, Sam, right? You know when he was playing Sam, you know what they call him? Rudy. <laughs> Peter Jackson, the director, hey, Rudy, get over here. That's how we got to do it. It's how I'm saying, you're Rudy. You know, that is our, uh, there's Angelo and Sean and Kenny Hall. Man, the music to the movie, how many people like the music to the movie Rudy? He did, he edited all that music from Jerry Ghostman. Look at, look at the people I get to hang around. These are all celebrities. <laughs> They all come. Man, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah, Bon Jovi come up to me a couple weeks ago with his son. He just wanted to go, look at that, coach. Look at that. Look at that. Make it happen. You'll be fine. You, know? you get to run out of town. There's Lou Holtz. He and I have the same age at work. Exclusive to the Big Memorabilia Company. There's Dwight Clark. A pass that Joe Montana threw. The, the, in the Dallas game. Oh man, there's us, John Favreau, Sean, and myself. We go on and on, and there's Bobby Gold who played uh, for us. Uh, uh, you know, they all played in them. There's a guy in the Field of Dreams. Isn't that cool? Remember that movie at the end? There's Tyler Alford. Remember him? Played yesterday. Hey, he was going to play. There's kids. They all come up to you. Not because you're old. Because you're rude. Here's no name Hockey King. There's a little baby who they call Rudy. <laughs> they even got dogs after me. Oh man, there's Mark Cavaro, Mike Tyson. You know, he's a neighbor of mine in Las Vegas. Hey, Rudy. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> there's Joe. Yeah. There we are. That's what we get. Isn't that neat? You get paid to do that. I don't believe it. When I was bad in school, I'd write my name 500 times and paid off. Gary <laughs> so, Henry. Everything pays off, guys. Especially discipline. When you get discipline, thank God for it, right? Because that means someone loves you. Okay, that's it. Did you enjoy the show? something here. Uh, what would you do differently? Different. Anything? Nothing. All right. That's oh, all right. Yeah, something different, I wouldn't be here, man. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do? Think about it. You take life as what? As it comes. Thank you very much. Because you're going to face, don't look for problems. They're going to be there. Just know how to handle them, right? Yep. Adversity. I mean, it's that's what I was trying to explain to you. My friends, you don't know. Life is short, so live it to the fullest and live it, you know, be the, don't worry about if this situation happens bad, you can overcome it. You need buddies, you know, like Joe is my buddy, he, he's always positive, you know, hey Joe, you know, boy, he's, he won't, hey Rudy, get up, it's time to go, but I don't mind, get up, he's always on me, I'm staying here this house, you can't rest a minute, so anyhow, <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. First time I played football? Okay, that's a great question. My dad would listen to the Notre Dame games on Sunday morning, you know, the replays. Or Lindsay Nelson, was it Lindsay Nelson? Yeah, remember that? We go to church and you hear the priest give the score. <laughs> and you come home and watch enough. You got two victories, oh, three victories in one weekend. Church, Notre Dame winning, right? And the replay. <laughs> and after they played the game, we went out and played football with our neighbors. But I always had to be the opposite team. My brothers were always done a game. So I was at all time center, you know? Hey, that's it's okay though. That was fun. That's when we that's played. And that day, baseball the same way. You know, I was in Yankee Stadium a month ago, and guess what they gave me? No. 
I was at the game. This is better than a baseball, I think. Mm -hmm. They had me speak to all the other people who worked there. Mm -hmm. But during the game, they changed the bases every three innings. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, watch the Baltimore Orioles, by the way. They, every three innings, they changed, put new bases. So they gave me first base in the fifth inning. Is that cool? Yes. Presented it to me. So I got, so the guy who sang it was A-Rock. Uh. <laughs> See that, you have a bad perception right here, right? <laughs> he wanted to meet Rudy, so I like him. So don't, <laughs> so don't even talk bad about A-Rock. He signed my face, too. <laughs> That's when I did it, when you're in that. People want to be around dreamers, so you keep dreaming. To start doing it. that's a great question. How are you doing in school? Good? Not great? <laughs> All right, let's see. I know you know this answer. I want to see if the adults are listening during my speech. And you all better answer in unison when I ask you this question. Are you ready for this test? Yes! Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Are, and, I, and you better all get, even the ones in the back, I don't think they need it. You better answer. <laughs> Who is the fifth president? Uh, oh, I, you know, I'm very excited. <laughs> Can I ask you one more time? Yeah. Can you give me some feeling that you listen? <laughs> you know, the Remember to teach? Who is the fifth president? James <laughs> There you go. That's how you do it, right? <laughs> Isn't that cool? Some of you even know we was not know now. <laughs> That's why you're excited, right? Okay, any other questions? Yes. People, situations, uh, moments. I see a fireman doing something heroic, I would get inspired. I see a kid doing something he shouldn't be doing, I would get inspired. When I was in the Navy, I see like, all kinds of experiences. Experiences. Gives you the motivation. That's why I say go out and live, go out and feel, and, and do the things. I had a two baseball. This is a baseball joke, right? These two baseball players. They love baseball, and, and, and they asked the question. And you think there's baseball in heaven? The guy says, I don't know. Never been there. So the one guy dies. He comes back a year later to see his buddy. You know how the spirits come. He said, Hey, man. The guy says, I got good news and bad news. He said, what's the good news? There's baseball in heaven. The bad news is you're getting ready. They're going to ask you to pitch next week. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, huh? It's just a baseball show. Anyone? Yes. Yeah, we go to like the Notre Dame uh, games for like at Texas, for an example, when we went, we go into this, they got the monogram room, and uh, we go all around, meet there, and all this place. It's kind of neat. Yeah. I'm not successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not successful. I'm just happy. There's a difference. <laughs> you know? I quit trying to be successful. See, I get confused by that word. Oh, you, know, you? Are you successful? What do you, what do you want me about? I'm happy. That's success, isn't it? Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes, sir. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just happy right now. <laughs> hey, listen, I was in Idaho two days ago. You ready for this? Some of my buddies who I've been friends with 10 years ago because of the movie Rudy became very successful businessmen. Very successful. So they bring me around. They want to have me around. So yesterday they brought me to their... Have you ever been to Idaho? Anybody? Yeah. It's heaven. It's heaven. It's heaven. Where they bought this golf course and this resort, and only special people can go there. Seriously, you gotta be you gotta be a billionaire in order to go there. Isn't that wild? <laughs> like uh, we go in and they bring us. What am I doing here? And they hand me this uh, this coin. They said, "You remember." You don't have to pay anything. It's $20,000 a year and about 50000 just to join. You have to have a net worth of a, a minimum of a half a billion. I get to hang around Jessica Beale. 
I'm already hit me. And I'm not even successful. Make the tape. The successful people want to be around you. That's the point. Yes. How many times did I walk? When I guys play football, man, I was, you know, it's funny because I was always, I was never that guy. I was always that guy that had to be the all-time center, center of the ball. So I touched it a lot. <laughs> yeah, they would never let me carry the ball. But that's okay, though, right? You're, you're a carrier, you carry the ball, you're a halfback. Left guard, awesome. Yeah, how's your grades? Oh, why are you smarter than me? You'll go to Yale. I guess. <laughs> That's awesome, yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. The culture, the culture of, of, of a Catholic environment, going to church. Think about it. Go to church. What's the priest talk about? The Notre Dame game. <laughs> if I go there, I can go to heaven. That's a goofy thought. <laughs> yeah, that's you know all that you know all that stuff. And, I, that's, and, and also too, they said if you went to Notre Dame, you were somebody. That's, they all looked up the Notre Dame people or kids or mm -hmm. like they were special. That's true. Guess what? They're wrong. Mm -hmm. We're all special. Mm -hmm. I, we just, you know, it's Notre Dame is a special place, but that doesn't mean you're not special if you don't go there. But I went because I wanted to, because that's what I wanted. And when I went to campus, I felt this is where I belong. You know, you felt at home, but you didn't have the grades and the money, but guess what? You find a way. It's like everything. So it's just like making a movie. Going to Hollywood, I felt like I belonged there. Or there's a lot of work you have to do, right? What do you do? Uh, I actually tra uh, transferred from a community college. Nice. I was a oh, good. <laughs> now I'm studying uh, business and marketing. Good for you. So you're in theater. It gives you confidence. Yes. That's why I always wanted to be in theater. <laughs> Sing and dance and, you know, act. Are I on a stage now? <laughs> 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 You make it differently, right? Awesome, good for you. You're going to do well, honey. Yes. <laughs> That's what kept you going, is your faith. If you don't have faith, you're going to get all these goofy thoughts. It's positive thinking. That's biblical. You don't have to be Catholic, Protestant, Mormon, Jewish. Just have faith. And those are religions you pick. God bless you. I look at everybody the same. Does that make sense? Your faith, whatever faith you believe in, that's good. You're all going to be there anyhow. Yeah, look. These two soldiers are out in the field. You like these jokes? <laughs> one's black and one's white, right? Black guy says, is Jesus black? I don't know. White guy says, I don't know. And the black guy says, I think he is. The white guy says, no, he isn't. Well, they both get killed the same day. And they end up in the you know, the gates where St. Peter is. So the black guy asked St. Peter, hey, we got to know, man, we've been fighting. We're in, is Jesus black or white? He said, I don't know, why don't you ask him? <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> and Jesus says, bring no snokes. I don't know. <laughs> right? We don't know. Anyhow, it's fun. Yes. At Notre Dame, yeah, that kind of gave me the confidence, the relationships. Uh, <clears throat> there was a boxing thing at Notre Dame that the students would actually like to raise money for the Bangladesh missions. And it was a wonderful uh, thing, and I got involved in that. And that's what the players are in my respect. I fought football players, because I was a little older than me. Uh, I beat those guys, and I became their Rudy. He changed Rudy when I got knocked down and got up. That's how the chant started, by the way, because of the boxing I did at Notre Dame. I became the champion. It all starts from something, you know? So that's the boxing was a neat thing. We raised hundreds and thousands of dollars for those commissions. So, oh, right. A couple more. Yes. 
I was ready to know, I was 25, you like that? How old are you? Man, you got to see 12 more years. You'll make it. <laughs> 25. Well, 27 when I graduated, I was 21. How old was I when I got to Holy Cross? I was 27. When I graduated from Notre Dame, how old was I? Right, you got 23. You like that? I have a 17 year old daughter, and I had my daughter when I was 50. How old am I today? 67. See how math works? You don't have to be that smart. Taking notes? Good notes? Oh, good. All right, thanks, guys. I love you guys. Uh,